Hello, <coughs> my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number. 14. Lesson number 14. It says 3014. 3 stands for the third edition. Third edition, day 14. And we are on page number 163. Page 163. Please turn to it. Please turn to it. Make sure the book is in front of you. Otherwise, it will be difficult for you to follow the work. On page number 13, we, have, we are looking at problem number 11. In problem number 11, we are told that we have a rectangular garden rectangular garden and we are told that the garden is 18 by 12 18 by 12 feet square feet and we are told that around the garden so here's our here's our garden And the garden we are told, the garden we are told is 12 by 18. Twelve by eighteen. And around the garden we are told that we have a walkway. A walkway which we are told is three feet wide. Three feet wide. All the way around. All the way around we have a walkway. And the walkway we are told is three feet wide. Question simply is, was the area, was the area of the walkway? Very simple, very straightforward question. What is the area of the walkway? Let's find out, shall we? Well, what we need to understand here, what we need to understand here is the fact that if we are told that the walkway is three feet wide, then this distance from here to here is three feet is, is three feet. This distance from here to here is three this is three feet. This is three feet. This is three feet. And this is three feet and so forth. So let's find out what the dimensions are of this rectangle. A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D, rectangle A, B, C, D that we see is that we know, we know that from here to here is 12 feet. We are, we are told that that's the garden. This, this in the middle is our garden. And garden is 12 by 18. And we have, a, we have a 3 feet here and a 3 feet there. By the time we add up this 3 feet, this 3 feet and this 3 feet right here, we find out that the entire length is 12 plus 3 plus 3 is 18 feet. And similarly here, this part is 18 feet. From here to here is 18 feet. But then we have 3 feet here and 3 feet here. So the length is 18 plus 3 plus 3. That's all. So that's the, that's the length of this entire big rectangle, outside one. If we can figure out the area of this outside one, then we can subtract the area of the, area of the garden from it. The area of the garden is very straightforward. It's 12 by 18. We subtract the area of the ABC. We take the area of the ABCD and subtract from it the area of the garden. What's, whatever is left over is the area of the walkway. So let's do that. So ABCD we can see here clearly is 18 by 24. 18 by 24. And therefore, and therefore, the walkway that we're looking for is going to be 18 by 24 minus. I left no room for myself. Minus, it's important that I, I, that I write, let's put it on the top here. So the area of the walkway will be easier if I continue writing in one line. Area of the walkway is going to be 18 by 24 minus the area of the garden, which is 18 by 12. Are you with me so far? And the 24, watch what happens. 24 and 12 here, you see there, there is something going on here. 
Let's write our 24 as 18 by 2 by 12. 2 by 12 is 24, isn't it? Minus 18 by 12. So what's going on here? What's going on here? What's going on here is that we have we have 2 times 18 by 12 minus 1 times 18 by 12. 2 times 18 by 12 minus 18 by 12 is just 18 by 12. It turns out, it turns out the area of the walkway is the exact area of the walkway, even though it's only 3 feet wide, but it turns out that the area of the walkway is in fact equal to the area of the garden. The walkway is as big as the garden itself. And the answer is 18 by 12, whatever that happens to be. 18 by 12, what, the, what would 18 by 12 be? I don't know what 18 by 12 would be. 18 times 10 is 180. 18 times 10 is 180. Uh, we don't want, this represents 10, 18. We need two more 18s, 18 and 18. See, 10 18s, another 18, another 18, that's 12 18s. 8 plus 8 is 6, 8 plus 8 is 16, 6 carry 1, 10 plus 1 is 11, and 2. There we go. 260 square feet is the answer. 260 square foot is the, 16 square foot is the answer. That's the area of the walkway. Let's do the next one, shall we? Problem number 12. Problem number 12, on the same page, on the same page, we have a line K we are told, number 12, again on the same page, page 163, on page 163, we, uh, we are told that we have a line K with x intercept of negative 4. We are told that we have a line K, a line which we are calling it K, and we are told that its x-intercept is negative 4. We are further told that the line, the line K that is, the line K passes through the midpoint, passes through the midpoint, of a line, of a line segment whose endpoints are A, 2, 9 and B, 2, 0. Question simply is, what is the slope Of line k. What is the slope of the line k? We know two things about it. We know that it has the x-intercept of negative 4 and we also know that it passes through the exact midpoint of a line segment whose endpoints we are told is 2, 9 and 2, 0. Let's draw the line here. It will make it easier to visualize it. So, first, the fact that the x-intercept is negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, right here in the negative 4. That's the x-intercept. It goes through this point, let's call it point P. It also goes through the midpoint of a line segment whose endpoints are 2, 9 and 2, 0. Let's plot them. 2, 9, 1, 2, 2, 9. Let's call it 3, 6 and 9. 2, 9. There we go. 2, 9 and 2, 0. 2, 0 is right here. Those are the, those are the end points of the line segment and this line that we're talking about, line K, line K that we're talking about passes through, passes through the midpoint of this line segment. The line segment goes from here to here. Do they call it A and B or is this something that I put down? Do they actually name it? They do not name them A and B. This A and B is something that I'm calling them. Do you understand this A and B? A is 2, 9 right here, A and B, but those names are not there in the book. What's the midpoint of these two points? Well, it's very simple. It's just a vertical segment. It's just a vertical segment. Midpoint is going to be half of 9. It goes all the way from 0 to 9. The midpoint is 4 and a half. 4 and a half is exactly here in the half width, right here. So it's going to be 2 and 4 and a half. And let's call this point Q. 
And the line that we're interested in is line K that we're talking about. So line K passes through the midpoint, which we just found out is right here, which we're calling Q. And it has an x-intercept of negative 4, which we found out is here, which we're calling P. So our line is this. Our line that we're looking for is this. This is our line, line K. What is the slope of this line? That's all we're looking for. All that fuss about nothing. All we're looking for is the slope of that line. Let's find out slope, which is, which is very straightforward. All of that work, is just as I said here, all that fuss for nothing, we simply want the slope. And how do we find the slope? Slope is simply the change in y over the change in x. Change in y over the change in x, or if you like, as you like, is simply the rise over the run. So if you go from point P to point Q, what's the, ch what's the change in Y? What's the, what are the coordinates of this point? The coordinates of this point are negative 4 and negative 4 and, and 0. So the Y, change in Y is 4 and a half because it goes from, it goes from 0 to 4 and a half. Change in Y is 4 and a half. I think I'm explaining too much. I, sh I should stop doing this thing. And change in x, well change in x is from here to here is 4, from here to here is 4, and from here to here is 2. So from here, point P to right here, point Q, change is 6. That's it, we're done. That's the slope. That's the slope. We just have to cook it. We just have to cook it a little bit, but those are the raw, ingredient, eh? raw ingredients. We cannot just put that on the dining table. We just have to uh, put it, uh, present it in a little bit more uh, palatable way. Just present. Let, let's, let's make it presentable. Do you understand? We, can just, we cannot just leave it like this. Four and a half over six. First of all, I don't like this business of four and a half. Do you like it? I don't like it. Let's ch change that into a whole number. How are we going to change that into a whole number? It's very simple. Multiply top and bottom by two. Multiply top and bottom by two. Four and a half times two is nine. And six times two is twelve. And now just reduce it. Now just reduce it. Divide top and bottom by three. Nine is going to become three and 12 is going to become 4, there you go. The slope of this line, the slope of this line is 3 quarters. Right here, 3 over 4. The slope is 3 quarters. And that's all there is. That's all there was. Let's move on to the next problem, problem number 13 on the next page. Problem number 13 is an interesting one. Let's see what we can do. I need a quick break if you don't mind. These problems, these four problems that we're going to solve, this page and the next page, these four problems that we are going to solve in this video are the exact same problem that appeared in the first two edition, the first edition and the second edition. If you're interested in watching the original solutions, uh, if you're interested in watching the original solutions, which go at a little bit of a slower pace, uh, you'll find the solutions to those four problems on day number 46 and 47. Day 3014 is the same work that we did on day 46 and 47. As I said, that's the original series. Number 13 on the next page, page 164. On page 164, number 13. It says, length of two sides of Length of two sides of triangles are 5 and 9. It's important that you have the book in front of you. You must read the problem yourself. Do you understand? Do not count on my reading the problem to you. So we have two sides of a triangle, we are told. Two sides of a triangle are 5 and 9. The question simply is, what, what could be the third side. That's all they're asking. What could be the third side? So we have a triangle here. We're told that the two sides are 5 and 9. This, let's, let's pretend this is 9 and let's pretend this is 5. What could be the third side? That's the question here. Okay, and if it looks like an isosceles triangle, I didn't mean to make it like an isosceles triangle. Let's make it a little bit more interesting. There. It doesn't have to be right angle triangle, it's just a triangle. It's just a triangle. We do not know what kind of triangle it is. What could be the third side? And the first choice that they give us is 3. And our job is to mark all the answers that are possible. There are four answer choices. All four of them might be possible. 
Maybe only one or two are possible. Maybe none of them are possible. Although I doubt that very much. It says which of the following could be the size? There has to be at least one. So first one is three. Let's ask ourselves: Could three be the could three be the missing side? Could three be the missing side? And again, I'm I'm, uh, I'm controlling myself. I'm getting the urge right now to go into the same long lecture that I did in the original video. I, I'm not going to do that. Just make it uh, simple and uh, straightforward. Could three be the third side? The answer is no. Why? Well, in order to answer that question, why, we have to understand what a triangle is. A triangle is simply a detour. It's not a triangle, it's just a detour. I want to drive, I want to drive from A to B. I want to go from town A to B. Listen carefully. I want to drive from town A to B. I have two choices. I can either go straight from A to B, in which case I'll end up driving 9 kilometers, or I can go from A to C, in which case I'll end up driving 5 kilometers, and then from C to B, I'll end up driving 3 kilometers. Is that possible? Of course it's not possible. How can you possibly... It's a detour. A triangle is a detour. Instead of, instead of going straight from town A to town B, I take, a, I take a detour. If I take a detour, then detour by definition has to be more than the direct route. How is it possible? How in the world is it possible that if I go from A to C and then C to B, I will only drive 8 kilometers, but if I go straight, I'll end up driving 9 kilometers. It is not possible. It is not possible. Why? Because, because the sum, SUM sum, of any two sides, any two sides of a triangle, of a triangle, has to be greater than the third side. Let's one more time. It says, the sum of any two sides of a triangle. What kind of triangle? What kind of triangle? It says of a triangle. Any old triangle. It doesn't have to be right angle triangle. It doesn't have to be isosceles, isosceles triangle. It doesn't have to be equilateral triangle. It doesn't have to be any particular kind of triangle. As long as it's the three sides are joining together and it forms a triangle, then by, by nature what you will find is that the sum of the two sides has to be more than the third sides. This side plus that side must be more than that side because I'm taking a detour. 3 is not possible. 3 is not possible because 5 plus 3 is not greater than 9. The next answer choice that we have is 5. Is 5 possible? Yes, 5 is possible because now what you're telling me is that if I drive from A to C, I'll drive 5 kilometers. If I go from C to B, I'll drive 5 kilometers again, hence total of 10 kilometers, but the straight route is only 9 kilometers. So that is possible. That is quite possible. The fact that it's an isosceles triangle now and it doesn't look like it, it doesn't matter because in the GRE, pictures are not drawn to scale. Just because I tell you this is 5 kilometers and that's 5 kilometers, it's an isosceles triangle, but it looks nothing like it, that's okay. That's how it is in GRE. Pictures are not drawn to scale. So, but, the, but the point here is that it is quite possible, it is quite possible for two sides of a triangle to be 5 and 5, where the third side is 9. Why? Because 5 plus 5 is indeed more than 9. Not only that, but sum of any two sides. It's just a sum of any two sides. So if you take any two sides here, it will be more than the third side. 5 plus 5 is more than 9, and 9 plus 5 is more than 5. If you take any two sides, the sum has to be more than the third side. So 5 is possible. That works. That's answer choice B, and that works. Let's look at answer choice C. Answer choice C says 8. Is 8 possible? Is 8 possible? Again, the answer is yes, that is possible. Why? Because this side 5 plus 8 is more than 9. Or, if you like, 5 plus 8 is more than 9 here. 5 plus 8, 5 plus 8 is more than 9. 8 plus 9, 8 plus 9 is more than 5. 5 plus 9 is more than 8. 5 plus 9 is more than 8. You take any two sides, you take any two sides of this triangle, as long as it is more than the third side, then that is a possible triangle. It is a possible triangle. It is feasible. It is doable. Answer to C also works. What about the last one? The last one says 15. Is 15 possible? Well, if you simply look at if you simply look at 15 plus 5. If we simply look here, only to this side, 15 plus 5. Well, 15 plus 5 is indeed more than 9. It is indeed more than 9, but that's not enough point here is the sum of any two sides. So 
5 plus 15 is indeed more than 9 and 9 plus 15 is, all, all, is also more than 5 but but what you end up telling me is that what you end up telling me is that now we are going in the other direction what you are telling me is that I want to go from town B to town A now I want to go in the opposite direction and I have two choices I have two choices what you are telling me is that if I want to go from B to A if I go oh, sorry, I meant to say from B to C we are going from B to C B to C what you are telling me is that if I go to B, B to C directly I will end up driving 15 kilometers but if I take a detour, I'll go five, 9 miles there and 5 miles there. 9 plus 5 is not more than 15. How can I possibly end up driving less? How can I possibly... Let's erase these other arrows we don't, so we don't get confused. How, how, can I, how can I possibly end up driving less if the straight distance from B to C is 15 kilometers? Then I cannot possibly drive from B to A and then from A to C and probably tell you that I took a detour and therefore I drove only 14 kilometers. It's not possible. The sum of the two sides, any two sides, has to be more than the third side. The reason why 15 is not possible, why 15 is not possible and A was not possible is because if you take these two sides, 9 plus 5, 9 plus 5 is only 14, it's not more than 15. That is not possible. It's not doable. Let's do number 14. Number 14. In number 14 we have a number line there. It says on the number line that is shown to us the tick marks are equally spaced. That's very important information that they are equally spaced. So here's the here's the line segment that is given to us. We are told that this is 0, this is x, this is y and this is Z and we are told that the tick marks tick marks, well, these, these marks here the tick marks right here these are called tick marks and they are equally spaced in other words this distance is equal to this distance and that distance is equal to this distance they are all equal even though they don't have any numerical value written on it but we are told that they are equally spaced where is it? I'm looking for it they are equally spaced, x, y, and z. Tick marks are equally spaced. And that is very important. That is very important here in order for us to be able to solve the problem. We are done with this thing, we can get rid of it. And the question is, which of the following must be true? We must pay attention here. Which of the following must be true? must be true, not could, they are not asking us which of the following could be true, which of the following must be true, in other words, it has to be true all the time. And the first statement they give us is, x times y times z is negative. x times y times z is negative. Now since here, in this, in this statement, in this statement, we are not talking about one side being more than the other, or the sum of the two sides being more than the other, since we are not talking about anything like that, we just want to worry about whether or not whether or not this product is, is less than zero, we don't have to worry about the numerical value, we simply have to understand that x is negative, y is positive, and z is positive. And we're going to make use of it. So y is positive, z is positive, positive times positive is positive, but x is negative. And since x is negative, negative times positive times positive, of course it's going to be less than zero. This statement is going to be always true. This is something that must be true. Let's do, let's do the last one first. Let's do the last one first, number C, because number C is also the same thing. In C, this, so this was A. In C, we have Z times Y minus X. Z times Y minus X. And what do we know about Y? Y, y we know, Y we know is positive. So we put positive here. Okay, pay attention here, positive, minus, this minus right here, minus x. And x we know is negative. And that is in the parenthesis. So whatever these values are here, x is negative, negative of x, negative and negative will become positive. When we, when we do this thing, it will become, this quantity will become positive. This, this is what you see in the parenthesis here, 
will be a positive quantity because this is negative and this is negative. So it's going to be this plus the product of this two which is positive. And what about Z? Z is also positive. Z is also positive. And therefore it is going to be more than zero. Which is what which is what we are claiming here. We are claiming that this product y, z minus z times y minus z, we are told z minus z times y minus x. Z times y minus x we are told is positive, which is true. It is positive. Let's look at answer choice B. Let's look at answer choice B over here. Answer choice B says x plus z x plus z is equal to y. Now this is a little tricky. Here we are not establishing whether it is positive or negative. We have to figure out whether this statement is something that has to be true all the time. Well, let's find out. The simplest, the quickest, the most economical way here is to simply plug in numbers. And, how, and what is it that allows us to plug in numbers? What allows us is that is the fact that they are equally spaced. So as long as you then make them equally spaced, it should work. Let's pretend that y is negative 1. In which case, uh, I meant to say x. Let's pretend x is negative 1. Let's erase this thing at the bottom here. Let's, let's pretend that x is x is negative 1. If x is negative 1, then y would have to be positive 1. Because negative 1 to 0 is 1 unit, and 0 to 1 is 1 unit, in which case z would have to be positive 2. Very good, they are equally spaced. They are all equally spaced. That's very important here. Otherwise, we cannot answer this question. And just plug in the values. x, which is negative 1, plus z, which is positive 2, and does, and does negative 1 and a positive 2 give us positive 1? And the answer is yes. And that's your value of y. So yes, indeed, x plus z indeed equal the sum of these two x and z indeed equals y. Answer b, stat statement b rather, not answer b, the statement d is also true. It turns out all three statements are equally valid. All three statements are true. All three statements are something that is going to be true all the time. They must, they must all be true. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.